Hello, Sid Roth, your investigative reporter here with Lori Malloy. Now, she had everything to live for, just depressed, suicidal. Nothing was working in her life. Uh, you would look at her on the outside, you'd say everything is fine, but on the inside, she's vomiting, she's fearful, she's having horrible dreams. Uh, you actually were mutilating yourself? Yes, and you know, quite a lot of people do that. Most people don't know, but uh, I would hit myself Is it that you disliked myself. yourself? What was the motivation? I thought I hated myself. I mean, I would say, oh, you're just so fat, and you're so ugly, and you're so, like, horrible, and you're so stupid, and I would just hurl you're these names at myself. You're weighing 100 pounds or less, and you're saying yeah. you're, you're, you're yeah. so ugly, you're so fat, yeah. you're so stupid. Yeah. My goodness. <laughs> Sounds like there was listening to the wrong voice. Yes. Yes. I think that's a big problem these days, is voices. There's a lot of voices out there. Um, and I think there are the voices that we hear, whether we've heard them as a child and we tend to repeat mm -hmm. them, or the, whether we hear them from our friends, or whether we just come up with them ourselves. And it's very, very damaging. Now, are there many people that have the problems that you had in society? Yes, I believe there are very, very many. Um, just seven or eight years ago when I published the book, there was about 30% estimated college-age girls that had bulimia. 30%? Yeah, yeah. But now I believe it's much more, and in fact, a lot of young men, and a surprising amount of young men, are vomiting and taking laxatives and, and having anorexia. And eating, of course, the compulsive eating where people get overweight. I mean, it is all the same thing. It's just different um, outcomes. Okay, you're trying everything the world's got to offer. You're trying psychiatry. You're trying, um, you got into um, uh, new age meditation. Yeah. Did that help? Yeah. <laughs> well, I was just surrounded by every kind of book you could imagine. Self-help and therapy and alternate, all kinds of religions. Uh, the psychiatry thing, like I said, I had left that off. Uh, Although I was still thinking, okay, I'm mentally ill, and, you know, now I'm really nuts because I'm not doing anything about it. And, but I was, I just, I needed an answer. And there were so many people in my life that also needed an answer. And they would come to me with their problems. And I'm like, I, I have problems too. I go, but I need an answer. So, and I believe Jesus was a man, just a good man, a, maybe a prophet. And I didn't believe he had the power that now I understand. But, what happened was, and there's all kinds of gods out there with the little G trying to like exalt themselves. And when people ask me now, they say, why do you follow Jesus the Messiah? And I'm, I said, because when I needed someone, he showed up. And not only did he show up, he completely delivered me of every single ailment that I had. And I was wandering around just saying, who are you, God? I'm desperate. I need your help. I mean, I couldn't function. I couldn't cope. I was living alone. I had no one to support me. I had to take care of myself as an architect, but I could barely work because I was always so, you know, exhausted from all this ritual. <laughs> and so... Um, I imagine it zaps your strength. Yeah, completely. And there were really dark times. Like, that's why the book is called No More Black Days, because I literally black out. And I would go days without remembering what I did. Hmm. And it was very, very depressing. And I, I started asking God, who are you? Who are you? You know, who are you? Are you the God of the Bible? Are you the God of Muhammad? Are you the God, are you Hare Krishna? I mean, who are you? So I'm wandering around, nothing. I, I'm not really here. I'm talking to the air. I'm just talking. But I'm talking in faith, and I'm asking God, so one night I was at this Bible study uh, trying to learn about some things and I heard to crawl out to Jesus because he will deliver you. And when I got home that night and the lights were out in my apartment for some reason and I had eaten like all the brownies at the Bible study. <laughs> oh, you were really doing it to yourself. <laughs> it's so humiliating. And so I went in my apartment to throw up these brownies and, and you know my insides were a mess and, and I was just, I was literally a mess. And I, I, I just remembered what I just heard, and I, I just, I called out to Jesus. I said, Jesus, deliver me. And I just, the minute I said his name, this breath, like a supernatural breath, sucked these demonic creatures off my body. Uh, could you see these creatures? Could I you sense it? I saw the creatures, and they were like these transparent fang looking creatures and now at this moment remind you i don't believe in the devil 
I don't believe in demons. Must and have I really, don't believe Jesus is God. This must have really freaked you out. <laughs> well, I was totally blown away. And the breath was so huge and so supernatural. Like I said, it just sucked the creatures off my body. And I saw them go off. And I was like, I was completely undone. And I was completely stunned. And I didn't know even what to do at that point. I just, I just stayed there in the bathroom. And I noticed I felt all this oppression and depression just lift off my body. I mean, completely. How did it feel to have that off, that cloud off after all these it years? It was like truth, like reality, like the truth that set me free, like his name is truth. And I realized in a moment that all that I had been through was actually demons and darkness and the devil, Satan, wanting to destroy my life and telling me to destroy my life. And you know how when people commit suicide, or have they tried to commit suicide, um, they hear voices, mm -hmm. kill yourself or kill your children. I mean, what about that, you know, the yes. things recently? So there really are demonic forces and there really are evil. There really is evil. But if there's evil, we need to find out what is the one thing we can do to get rid of it. Well, we're going to find this out. But how about you? Are you depressed right now? Are you going through it like Lori was going through? Maybe not as bad, but maybe even worse. Are you suicidal? Are you desperate? Are you hopeless? How would you like the wind, the breath of God to blow all that junk off of you, all of it away? Don't go away. We'll talk about this more right after this word. Lori, we were t there at such a dramatic moment. You, yes. you don't believe in demons. You don't believe in the devil. You don't believe in hell. All you know is you're depressed and there's a dark cloud over you. You don't even understand how it came, but it's there. But you certainly don't know how to get rid of this dark right. cloud. And all of a sudden, describe this. It, it was like you could feel a wind come on you. It was more like a breath from outside of myself sucking the creatures off my body. It was so... Uh, huge and so powerful and so omnipotent and it was absolutely blew my mind and I realized in the name of Jesus he has the name above every name and that in his name all darkness must flee and his name and he alone is available to each and every person alone I mean here I was just surrounded by all this self-help and here we are with all these different religions and doctrines. But when it comes to really needing someone to be there when you need them, you need God, and you need the real God to stand up. And uh, at Lord. that moment, he did.